Good evening. This is the Historical Society of Santa Rosa's webinar. And tonight we are bringing you the second part of a webinar that started back in January of this year. We're giving just a few moments for our participants via Zoom to enter into the room. And this webinar room will allow our participants to watch the presentation and to key in your questions into chat. There will not be availability for raising hands or for your audio um, no, or your video. We will have audio and video from our presenter. And then after the presentation, which will be approximately an hour long, we will facilitate your questions via chat to our presenter. We also welcome not only our Zoom participants this evening, but also our Facebook Live viewers. And our Facebook Live viewers have the availability to key in your questions and comments into the Facebook feed while you're watching the live video. And one of our board members from the Historical Society of Santa Rosa will be giving us that information on Zoom so that we can facilitate your questions and comments as well after the presentation. So thank you everybody for joining us this evening. Once again, we are here because of the Historical Society of Santa Rosa presenting this webinar series. And now I'd like to welcome you officially to tonight's webinar. And we will be hearing from the president of the Sonoma County Historical Society. And he is presenting part two of Santa Rosa then and now. His name is Raymond Johnson, and he likes to call it Ray's then and now. So Ray, take it away. Oh, thank you. I, and I wanna thank the Historic, Historic Society of Santa Rosa Leslie Graves, Denise Hill, and all of you for your support. I also want to recognize that these are the ancestral lands of the local Native American tribes. Uh, Raised Then and Now is featured on Sonoma County History Facebook page, which includes all of Sonoma County. Uh, but tonight, it's all about Santa Rosa. And I've selected several photos I think you'll enjoy. These photos are all in random order, different times, different locations. Some are not in Santa Rosa at the time they are taken, but they are now. All photos are from the Sonoma County Library, unless noted otherwise. Sometimes it's easier, because uh, if you want to go back to the old picture, it's uh, easier to wait, um, or you, know, you can always wait till it comes out on YouTube and then you can view it there and then go back and forth to look at the old picture and the new picture. Anyway, uh, the first photo tonight is not a then, then and now, it is taken from the 1883 Sonoma County Courthouse balcony in the plaza looking south. There, there were several photos taken from this balcony at all different angles and different dates. I have copies of about 20 that I've been able to find so far. This courthouse was built in 1883 and it was destroyed in the 1906 earthquake. <clears throat> Excuse me. These photos are fascinating because of the details and the elevation. I don't have a now photo, at least not yet. Um, I am working with Don Silverick to create now photos from the same elevation and the same angle as the original photos were made. And we will be presenting them sometime in the future in some format uh, yet. Uh, so anyways, on, in this photo, I just wanna note a couple of things. Um, the, the building on the left there, the Grant Hotel. Now all of these, everything, pretty much everything in this photo was destroyed in the 1906 earthquake. So um, you're not gonna recognize anything here. But anyways, the Grand Hotel right there in the front, um, behind it is the Eagle Hotel. And then behind that, behind the tree is Colgan's, Santa, it's a Santa Rosa house. And we will be seeing another photo of that coming up here pretty soon. 
Way in the back uh, in the farmland back there is Luther Burbank's home. Uh, he arrived in 1873, but I don't know, but I don't remember when he moved into this house. Um, that's one of the things about these pictures. There is so much detail in here and I want to do a lot of research to identify uh, what those buildings were. And so, so we can show that. Um, all right, um, so that's all I got to say about this. Now we can really get started on uh, then and now. This is uh, in 1956, uh, the Richfield station was on Mendocino and Johnson Street. You can see the sign right there. Johnson Street doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it, it was modified, 7th Street and Johnson Street was combined and they did some you know, a little wiggling around to get it all, get it all in one piece. And um, so anyway, there's the Richfield Station in, in the back under by the, behind the pumps there, that building there is, is a Safeway store. And today it's, it's the Trek store. So that building is still there, there's nothing else. Uh, and you can see it there. And then you can also see 7th Street, uh, which is the extension of 7th Street. Uh, and then it curves around and it goes, goes back into what was Johnson Street. All right, next, uh, this is a 1961 Don ne Meacham photo, uh, still, still Sonoma County Library photo, uh, Alfredo's Cantina. Uh, this is the corner, well, today is the corner of Stony Point, or Mar I should say Marlowe, Stony Point, and College. And uh, this is looking south. So uh, Stony Point will come up. Uh, will you know they, they will extend Stony Point from Sebastopol Road up to this point uh, later in the '60s, uh, and uh, it'll you know it'll change everything. And as you can see in the next photo, the now photo, that uh, Alfredo's Cantina, if it existed today, would be in the line of traffic. Uh, so, you know, there was uh, no way to save that, that building. But this house here on the left uh, is, was there then, it's just not in the, you know, the, the then photo, uh, but, it's, but it was there at that time. All right, next, uh, this is 1925, looking at the Southeast corner of D Street and Fourth Street, it's the Masonic Lodge. And it was built in 1907, right after the earthquake. Uh, the, the first Masonic Lodge was on the off the plaza, and it was one of the very first buildings built uh, in Santa Rosa. <coughs> this building, I think, lasted until the 60s. And uh, so now you should be able to recognize that corner. Excuse me. Oh, <coughs> I'm choked up. Um, Okay, so next, uh, this is a very old photo, one of the first photos in Santa Rosa, 1877. This is a Santa Rosa house. And it was one of the first buildings built in Santa Rosa in 1853. Um, that's, and that's almost the same years that Santa Rosa became in existence. And um, it was here for, for quite a few years and it wasn't large as you'll see from the next picture. Uh, in 1870, in 1870, the railroad came here, and uh, where before the Santa Rosa House was the center, was pretty much the center of town. All the stagecoaches stopped there, what, depending on which direction they were going. They always stopped at the Santa Rosa House. In 1870, the railroad came, and all that changed. Although there's still, and probably in that original picture, was uh, you know they still had need to get passengers from the train to, to the hotels. So they all had uh, shuttles uh, to take their guests to their hotel. This photo uh, is 1912. And um, in, in it, you can see how the, the Santa Rosa house was enlarged. Uh, but toward this time, this, this building is getting pretty old and is, doesn't appear to be used as a hotel anymore. It might be now apartments. And Colgan still owns it. Uh, he turned it into a blacksmith. 
uh, with you know horseshoeing and whatever. And then and then eventually this this building uh, was moved back further on the lot and probably used as a barn or something until it was eventually torn down. And then today, this is the Santa Rosa Annex on uh, First and Santa Rosa Avenue. Back then, it was called Main Street. So that's this is the the, the site of the Santa Rosa House. It took me years to figure that out. All right, next, this is another uh, uh, kind of fascinating photo. This is 1909 from the LeBaron collection, uh, photo collection. Uh, it's still in the, Santa, uh, the Sonoma County Library. But we're looking south on South Davis Street uh, from the bridge. There used to be a bridge crossing Santa Rosa Creek. You might remember that from part one. Um, and this is South Davis Street, whereas in Santa Rosa, it's just Davis Street. And you know that East Street and then there's a Southeast Street. Well, the addresses back in those, well, the addresses were originally, when they were originally set up, it was the creek that divided the, that divided the addresses. So the creek was always zero and they went up going north or went up going south. And then so if, if a road crossed over the creek, then this, the southern part of it was called south. And the same thing, it goes for the railroad. The railroad was the east-west divider. And so, you have college and you have West College and you have third and you have West third. And then from that point, the, the, the addresses go up uh, from zero on either side of the railroad and they go up. If you, if you go all the way to the coast, you can see the addresses just go, go up and up and up. And same if you're going to the north toward Healdsburg or Cloverdale, the addresses just keep going up and going south through Sonoma and Petaluma, the addresses go up. They all start at the railroad in Santa Rosa Creek. Now, all cities, they do their own addresses. So, so that, that, that theory doesn't quite work in most cities or most towns. But uh, I, I find it, and then there's, there's certain, um, uh, you know, different changes and things like that that they've done over the years. Um, anyway, <laughs> back to the street. Uh, when the freeway was put in, they took out uh, South Davis Street for the most part. There is a little section of it further south. And so that photo was taken at this location uh, on the freeway on ramp or off ramp. Uh, and I used the, uh, the, there's a website called Sonoma, 19, it's 1942, Sonoma County, then and now. And you can move the bat map back and forth uh, you know, from current to 1942. And I believe the way it looked like, this is the exact spot where that photo was taken for South Davis Street. Um, so anyway, that's a, that was a, a huge change. All right, enough with that. Um, this is a 1961 Don Meacham photo again. And this is looking uh, down First Street uh, from, from D Street towards E Street. Now, if you really think about that, this none of this sur survives anymore. It was all the whole street and all these buildings were removed for redevelopment in the 60s. So when you look at the now photo, um, <laughs> It's a. Uh, it's it was it was really difficult to take the photo, and I'm you know that's the only way I could do it because I think this is the right location uh, where First Street was uh, at one time. Now the creek on the in the then photo, the creek was on the other, just on the other side of those buildings, and in this case, the creek is in the parking lot on the right under I should say under the parking lot, um, in a tunnel. All right, uh, this is in 1949, um, looking south on Hillsburg Avenue at 10th Street. And on the left is the Saturday Afternoon Club. And that big house on the right is still there. And those apartments in the way in the back back there, the Art Deco apartments, I forget what the name is, or I think they're pink colored. Uh, they're still there, or, or they're there in this picture at any rate. And uh, so anyway, and then uh, for now, um, 
kind of looks the same except for the extra striping and arrows and stuff that they painted on the roads. But uh, most of the buildings are, are the same in this photo. All right, so this is a zebra. <laughs> um, and you and so you, you can tell from that that this is a zoo or a zoo, I'm sorry. This is the circus and uh, in 19, circa 1905, not sure the exact year, but in those days, in the early days, the, the, a lot of the zoos um, moved on the railroad. They had their own trains and they moved from city to city uh, by train. And in this particular case, this is the Norse Brothers Big Train Animal Show. Uh, and they came up on the Southern Pacific uh, in 1905. And at that, at that time, it was called the Cartinas and Santa Rosa Railway. It ran uh, from Sonoma. Well, locally, it ran from Sonoma uh, to Santa Rosa. And the station was on North Street and 13th. Um, I think we had a photo of that in, the, in the part one. And so in this case, this, the, the train came up and parked in the yard over there and they unloaded all of the, you know, the zoo or zoo, the uh, circus stuff. And they usually did what they do a lot of times to drum up some uh, participation is they would they would go on parade and they would go on parade, you know, into town or whatever then then to the to their circus site. And in this case, the circus site was in the field that used to how you used to have the Pacific Methodist College, uh, which is now mostly the Santa Rosa Middle School on uh, 4th and 5th. Uh, no, that's 5th and College and um, um, was well, now East Street, used to be King, well, it's King partially, and uh, Brookwood. Um, North, North Street used to go all the way down. In fact, you know, where the Mexican, uh, the Mexican restaurant La, La Patio and the park uh, used to be the Fremont School. That was actually called North Street at one time and it went up, up to college and ended there. Then it jogged over and went up where North Street is today. Anyway, this, uh, so this is, this photo is on Benton. Uh, I think it's Benton Drive or Benton Road, I'm not sure. And it's between North and Wright Streets. And um, this is a gay, or it's not a gay LeBaron. It's a LeBaron collection photo, but it is from the 19th century town book uh, that gay LeBaron uh, co-wrote. And that's where I got, got this photo. And then, so the now photo, you can see that the, well, it's hard to see with the tree in the way, but that is the same house that was in the in the in the first photo. All right, uh, this is Eisenhood's restaurant, um, along with Abshire Senator Office, Uptown Beauty Salon, and this is on Exchange. Now, Exchange uh, ran alongside of the courthouse um, between Fourth and Third. Uh, this was on the west side. On the east side is Hinton. And uh, they were one-way streets at the time. And uh, today, those streets are still there, but they're not called Hinton and Exchange. And their direction of travel is reversed. So anyway, so this is what that looks like today. There's no, no building there at all. Uh, Hotel E is is eventually. I hope they're going to uh, build their uh, uh, their other wing, uh, other wing of the hotel here. All right. So now we're moving over to Farmers Lane. This is Farmers Lane, and you can see the flamingo uh, sign there. This is circa 1965, and um, so you can see the old Phillips 66 station. <clears throat> and the in the bridge, Farmers Lane. Uh, looking north from uh, Montgomery Village is a little further back on the right, and also on the right would be uh, St. Eugene's. And it looks like some of this is under construction at this time. And then the now photo uh, looks the same. As you can see the flamingo, more trees. The gas station is 
is gone uh, and that's a bank building now. I don't know which one is in there. Okay. Now the next photo is also from Farmer's Lane, almost from the same, it's a, from the same location, just the other side of the street. This is in 1950. Uh, and so this is, this bridge was probably, I don't know what, how old this bridge is, but it's obviously much older. And there's no Flamingo. The Flam Flamingo was built in 1960. And uh, there's no service stations either here. Um, now that building where it says Borden's Ice Cream uh, in, in little letters, it's hard to say, but it's Doak's Toot and Tote. And uh, they served ice cream and other things. Uh, and that building existed up until just a few years ago. The city bought the lot and they tore down the building. And I believe they're going to use that space for uh, Farmer's Lane. Uh, farmers and 4th Street uh, turn lane or something. I'm not really sure what they're going to do exactly. So, and then we look at the photo now. Uh, so you see a much larger bridge. Uh, and this, and of course, the building is gone. Uh, you can see the service station in the back. Of, you can see the top of, top of the Flamingo sign. All right. Next, we have a three-way. This is circa 1890, uh, the Santa Rosa flour mill. And this is on Wilson and 6th Street, looking northwest. The railroad uh, is on the other side of the building here, can't, can't see it. This is a big flour mill, uh, high production and so on. In 1906, this building was largely destroyed uh, by the earthquake and was rebuilt. And in the next photo, you can see this is 1920 photo, uh, and it's now Sperry's, but it's uh, still a flour mill. Much smaller size. Uh, I guess they didn't need all that space. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, and you can see the railroad car there on the left showing where the, uh, where the railroad is. Actually, that car looks like it's right there in front of the building. So it looks like the, the, fair, the flower is using the railroad. Um, anyway, and then it, there's no trees. Well, I should say there's a little one there. Now there's lots of trees. It's exactly the same building. Uh, just, just can't hardly see it. Uh, today is uh, Arlene Francis Foundation is in this building. Okay, now then this is, uh, this took me a long time to figure out where these, there's a series of photos that were taken at probably about the same day. And it took me forever to figure out where these were. Um, so I will tell you, this is this is US 101, uh, the expressway, they called it a freeway, uh, but there were seven signals on it. So it was more like an expressway, I guess, or more like a city street, I think, with seven signals. And um, so we are looking, uh, this picture is looking northwest. The street, this big building here doesn't exist anymore, but the street in front of it or on, behind it is Fifth Street. And to the left of that building is uh, um, uh, what the hell? It, it's um, uh, <laughs> all right. It was Wilson? It's not Wilson. It's the other one. I always uh, I'm forgetting I'm forgetting the name. So anyway, uh, this is showing the construction equipment and how they poured uh, poured concrete to make a freeway or a, a a highway. Interesting. I would I would love to see how all this stuff works because I can't figure it out. Now the the house there that's on the right in the far right. Um, when they elevated this highway, turned it into a freeway in the 60s, they eliminated that house. The building next to it the, with the white sides, that's, that's today is City 205. And so that, that building is still there. So there is a landmark. It took me a while to figure out where this is. But you can see in the next photo, giant US 101 above and City 205, you can see back there in the back uh, where the cursor is pointing. All right, so this is uh, Santa Rosa General Hospital. And uh, this is on the corner of 7th 
and A Street. Um, I'm not sure when this was built and uh, when, it, when they stopped using it. Uh, but anyway, uh, the photo was taken in 1941 and this photo is looking west. And so the now photo um, shows currently there's no more, the hospital is gone and the uh, Catholic uh, Charities building is being is under construction in the background. Of course, it's, since I took this photo, it's progressed quite a bit more and they've actually opened up part of the wings over there. And they might, I haven't been over here for a, a, a few weeks, so they might have already started construction on the next sections of it. It's being built in phases. All right, so uh, this is 1962 photo, um, GK Hart dealership. And he was, he'd been around for quite a while. And he, I think he had dealerships in different places. Uh, in this photo, he's he's advertising Rambler Jeep, uh, but I've seen a photo with Etzel on the building, which must have been 1957, 58, or 58, 59. And then the uh, the building to the right, I've I have I've seen pictures, a lot of photos with it. It says Lincoln Mercury on it, uh, but I don't see any Lincolns or Mercurys in this photo, so I'm I'm not sure. At this date, 1962, uh, it was a, uh, whether it was a Lincoln Mercury or not. Because every car I see in this, except for that MG, looks like an MG there on the right. Every other car is a Rambler. Uh, I don't see any Jeeps. Uh, anyway, so uh, this building existed until the freeway interchange. Well, actually, I'm, I'm not sure if this building was torn down earlier than that, but the... Um, when the freeway was put in, the interchange for for 12 and 101, uh, Maple Avenue got moved a little bit to the north. And so where Maple is just on the other side of that, in fact, that sign says construction zone. So they must be in the process of building that, uh, that interchange uh, when this picture was taken. Uh, but you can see, yeah, so the now photo. Uh, no more building. And like I says, I think that Maple Maple was moved north a little bit. And so it, it took out the location of that, that building. Okay. Next, uh, this is Grace Brothers Brewery. And it looks like they've got a couple of trucks out here that they're showing um, posing for a photograph. But it's kind of odd that they would do this on the backside of the brewery such with that telephone pole and all those wires. Uh, and maybe it's not, maybe it's just happened to be coincidence. Although that truck is parked up there on the sidewalk, it looks like. So uh, I guess it was. Uh, anyway, today this is uh, the Hyatt Regency. And I believe this is pretty close to the uh, original location. All right, so uh, this is a very familiar photograph. Uh, you know, it's the Grace Pavilion, it's 1948. And this was the theme of the fair at the time. And in the front, uh, you know, Benna Valley Road went by here, uh, although it was, it was, there was more space and there's a lot more parking. And today, uh, all that changed, of course, because I'm standing underneath Highway 12 and they had to move Benna Valley Road over uh, to make room for the freeway. And I did not, um, I didn't get this at fair time. So I didn't get the theme of the of the fair on this. So this is this is one of those photos that is needs a makeover. Um, a more now, a more now picture. And some of you probably will remember the holiday bowl out there on it was on mission. Uh, this is 1959. And the Holiday Bowl was on Mission Boulevard. Uh, although that road at one point was called Reservoir Road, and that was before Mission was even was even built at all. Uh, I believe Mission was built in the '60s, early '60s, and they had to straighten out Re Reservoir Road to meet up with where Mission Boulevard ended. Um, and then, of course, so they just extended the name of Mission all the way down to. Montgomery Drive. 
So um, nothing exists today in this photo as it was at that time. So you can see in the next photo, we got a street and uh, there's a Walgreens here and the Union Hotel restaurant and um, you know a few other things, but uh, it's changed quite a bit. This is on Farmers Lane, just a little south of where those other two photos were taken. Uh, the House of Charles, uh, this is 1958 Don Meacham photo uh, from the Sonoma County Library. It's 233 Farmers Lane between 4th and Montgomery, looking west. And you might have rec you might recognize this building. It's still there, uh, and it looks the same. It's now a dentistry, and this was this building was just remodeled recently. There used to be a couple of magnolia trees in the front and they're gone and they've remodeled the building a little bit. Okay, 1924. Um, this property here looks like a park on the left. It belongs to the IOOF, the Independent Order of Foresters. No. <laughs> Independent Order of Odd Fellows. <laughs> Get that straight. Um, and you can kind of see the building in the background. Uh, before before this, or before they bought it, it was the Hotel Lebanon. It's a nice large uh, building. Uh, I don't have any good pictures of it close up, I, although I think the library has, has much more photos of it. Now, back in the background, this is looking down Mendocino, this corner of Mendocino and Johnson. Uh, and we talked about Johnson earlier, uh, and you'll, so you'll see that uh, it's not there anymore. But the courthouse is in the back. Uh, that's the big, I call it the big courthouse, built in 1908-ish and uh, left us in about 1960, late 60s. All right, and then the now photo. Uh, so you, you can see where... Johnson Street used to be uh, right here uh, alongside these buildings. And of course the courthouse isn't there anymore and the Hotel Lebanon isn't there anymore. And, and, and a few other things have changed considerably since 1924. Okay. Lenus, Linus, Linus. Um, I've, I, you know, I've, I've actually eaten there once. <laughs> Uh, that was, uh, it was here until 1996, and then uh, it was converted into chops uh, right here. And uh, some of the original building was, was kept and was still there. This is on Adams and uh, 6th Street. So Starks is right down the street here, which used to be called Michelle's, which used to be called Gidai's. Um Okay. Now we're looking north on Marlow, uh, just before well, Guerneville, Guerneville Road is up there on the on the hill on the on the little rise. And uh, this is 1968, and they're taking this picture before major construction going on. Um, and the Monroe School is over here on the left, and I'm not sure if any of the school buildings are in this photo or if they're a little further further beyond. But the original, well, it wasn't the original Monroe school, but it was, uh, the, it was one of the later ones. And of course, Monroe School was moved much further down the street on the other side of Guerneville Road. And they named it James Monroe School, um, which had nothing to do with the Monroe. There was the Monroe, uh, the school was probably named after the Monroe family, although, and they probably provided the land for the original Monroe school, although we have not been able to find any maps that show any Monroe property on them. So, so, so far we haven't been able to prove how the school was called Monroe. Anyway, then today, you know, of course you got five lanes wide, two bike two bike paths and a parking on either side going down. Now, originally in 1850, or real close to 1850, this road, um, the county built a road called Green Valley Road. 
And it went out, you know, if you go down Guerneville Road all the way out there to Gramercy Highway, there's it bump, bumps into Green Valley Road. Well, Green Valley Road, uh, they named that road all the way. And it came down Guerneville Road to this point and then turned south on Marlow. And then it turned uh, east on College and then went all the way down uh, to Link, turned down Link to Ninth uh, Avenue and it went into town. Uh, and that was the county road that they built in uh, early 1850s, and they called it Green Valley Road. Uh, and then, of course, later on, it, the, the names got changed and split up. Okay, enough of that. Okay, uh, the Memorial Hospital uh, was built in 1950. This, this is showing it what it looked like in 1962, which is the main building, the, the Monroe Hospital. Then the building here on the left was the Paul Kelly Institute. When they did the remodeling, they eliminated the whole left wing and that tower. But the right wing of the hotel, of the hotel, of the hospital remains, it's still there. Um, and you can see just a barely a little bit of it in this photo, there's all these trees here in the way. And of course, to the left, it's been major, major uh, remodels and changes and additions as well as across the street. They've done, done uh, lots of expansion. So this is looking down Montgomery Drive at Soto Yomi. Okay. This 1956, we're back over on uh, Mission or it was Reservoir Road. And um, so this is what it looked like 1956. That, that bridge there is brand new. And that's the reason for these photos. And there's a few few photos of the bridge. And so this, it looks like the road was just paved um, or it might even look like a gravel or oil road. I'm not sure. But the Holiday Bowl would be on the left past those trees there when whenever they built that. I'm not sure when they did. And then the drive-in theater was to the right off the photo um, way over there across the other side of the creek. And then, but those those houses that are at the end of the road are still there. Um, uh, anyway, so, and there's what it looks like today. Uh, major change. Of course, they straighten out that road so it would end, you know, so it would be combined with Mission and made it much wider and added lots of things. Um, but the houses back there are still there. Okay, and still on that side of town, this is Montgomery Village. Uh, this is Montgomery Drive and Farmers looking south. So you can see uh, there's a Chevron or a standard station, which doesn't exist anymore. Then the building next to it, uh, well, you can see that the wagon, the, the uh, Montgomery Village wagon, which that, that wagon doesn't isn't there anymore either. And the building behind it's not there. But to the right of the standard station, that building is still there. And if you look further down the street, you can see the uh, Catholic Cemetery, uh, the Calvary, Calvary Cemetery there. And of course, way up behind that is Taylor Mountain. I also find it interesting how they painted their stripes for the crosswalks. It looks like they used a big roller and they didn't didn't really do a, a nice coat of paint on it. It looks like it's pretty thin. Anyway, we can move on. Um, anyway, that was 1968. And this is a more current rainy day. I probably should have taken this on a clearer day so you could see. I don't know if you can see Calvary Park very well uh, now or not. Uh, but you can see how the, the, the service station, there used to be, I think, up to five service stations in Montgomery Village at one time, and they're all gone. Um, all right. This is uh, 1939 Trom Trombetta Distributors, and they, uh, they are in the depot building that was for the San Petaluma and Santa Rosa Railway, uh, which ran through here and ran down the street. You'll see that coming up. And uh, so this is the depot building where they would drop off freight and pick up freight uh, for, you know, for places going to, you know, the, that railroad ran to Sebastopol, Forestville, 
and Petaluma. And uh, so anyway, this is a, a, it looks like there, this is a picture that is, um, was taken by Ken Scholl Studio and probably shows their sales force uh, is what I'm thinking. Um, this is also on the corner of 4th and Wilson. So just across, um, behind the photographer is the Depot Park. And behind that Acme beer sign, there is some railing, some black iron railing. It looks like, looks like this, the same stuff that's by the windows on, that are flanking it. But designed into the railing, it says Santa Rosa. And that was, you know, it's kind of like a, a station shot. Sh uh, a station sign on a railroad, except it's, it's except it's made out of iron. So on the next photo, and you have to remember that next time you go down there, if you haven't already seen it, you can see it in this photo. It's just that tree is blocking it. You can see the S and you can see the O and some of the other lettering. But when you're down there, go take a look at that. Um, still in really good shape. Chevy's has done, you know, they've done very little remodeling on this building. So it looks almost exactly the way it was when the railroad had it. All right. Um, this is right after the 1906 earthquake. Uh, I don't know if this was a, a postcard, but it you know it says on the bottom, this is the temporary shack after the shake. And uh, quick repair shop at 312 D Street. And when I first saw this picture, I thought, well, they're, they're repairing bicycles. But no, they're shoes. It's a shoe repair shop. And um, so. Anyway, then today, 312 D Street looks like this. Uh, so it's on it's on D Street between 4th and 5th. OK, now this, 1939, um, they used to race cars. They raced cars and motorcycles and I don't know what else at the fairgrounds. And in 1939, they were racing cars. Um, I don't, I guess it looks like I don't know how many cars are in this wreck, but it looks like all of them <laughs> to me. And so I was like, I think this was the end of the race. And uh, it's such a jumble of cars. It makes me wonder how many people died or were injured. But I, I understand, I think, that nobody died. So I was curious as to where this was on the track. So I did some studying with the trees in the background and looking at a bunch of other different photos of different things. And so I determined that this photo was taken right here. Um, and so I think that big jumble of cars is, was right in front of me uh, when I took this photo. And the trees in the background, of course, they've been, they've been a lot of those trees have been cut down. The uh, fairgrounds have changed, of course, quite a bit over the years. Um, but anyway, I thought that was interesting. All right, uh, circa 1900, the Rincon School, which, as you can guess, was in Rincon, Rincon Valley. Uh, it's on the corner of, of Calistoga Road and, and Highway 12, or Sonoma Highway. This photo was taken by Alice Austin Hall. Uh, and you know of Austin Creek in Rincon Valley. Well, that, that family owned a lot of property. Um, and they combined with the Hall family. They still have a ranch there, a small ranch there behind Safeway. And when I was over there visiting them, that Rinkin School sign is on their barn, so they have that there. The only other thing you could recognize today is that rock wall, as you can see on the next photo right there. So I don't know why they just didn't keep the school because they haven't used this property for anything. Okay, uh, and then this is also Rinkin Valley. This is kind of what we would say in town or the town of Rinkin Valley. This is where all the businesses were. Uh, on the uh, right by the corner of Middle Rinkin Road and Sonoma Highway. This is when it was obviously a two lane road. And um, there were several businesses here Baldi's Market, RV Cleaners, Al's Rinkin Wilshire Gas Station, Chuck's Rinkin Garage. Uh, and this is looking northwest at Sonoma Highway towards Middle Rinkin Road. And so today, um, all those buildings have pretty much changed. Behind the safe, that's 7-Eleven. To the right, there's a big old warehouse. 
that you can't see in this photo and you couldn't see it in the old photo either, maybe a little bit. And then further down the street, there's some residences and uh, some houses down there. And they've been boarded up now for years. And there was a redevelopment sign hanging there for years also. So I think all that's going to be changing one of these days. All right, so this postcard, 1912, Santa Rosa Creek. And uh, this is down to Santa Rosa Avenue, Santa Rosa Creek. And back there behind, between all the girders is uh, Luther Burbank's home uh, on Tupper Street. And uh, this bridge was also featured in part one. There was another uh, photograph uh, that from the other side that shows a little bit of this bridge and the other bridge. Anyway, so today, <clears throat> the bridge's gone, or that bridge is gone. There's a, uh, another bridge. This bridge looks like it was built in the 50s. I, I'm not sure when it was built. And of course, uh, Santa Rosa, Sonoma Avenue was altered. And so the Tupper Street house is gone. And, uh, and a few other things. So anyway. Okay, and this is, we're back out in, um, uh, uh, toward Montgomery Village. Uh, this was Straw Hat Pizza. This photo was taken in 1989 when this building was brand new. And which is really surprises me is the fact that uh, when I moved here in the mid nineties, it was already Taco Bell and it wasn't the same building. So it seems to me that building only lasted a, a few years was torn down and they built the Taco Bell. And so this, this is Farmer's Lane between Hohen Frontage and Nia Thomas. Um, back in the back used to be the Sizzler. Uh, now it's, uh, and there was another uh, restaurant for about three days. <laughs> and then uh, now it's Round Table. And uh, Johnny Garlics was on the right, which is now a dental office. So anyway, now we're uh, kind of deep in Bennett Valley. This is Ulipa Road. This is where Ulipa Road used to end for for a while. Uh, this 1961 photo, and there the the bridge is under construction. It was as you can, it says on the bridge was built in 1961. And this, so this is Ulipa looking south, and Creekside Road is the intersection. The house on the left is still there. Taylor Mountain in the background, and look at all that open land. No trees anywhere. That was all ranch land at one time for um, usually mostly cows. Today, um, you can barely see anything anymore before all the trees. Okay, so next, um, this is 1922. And uh, some of you, you might recognize that dog. Luther Burbank's dog, uh, Bonetta. Bonita. I'm not really sure how that's pronounced. Bonetta, but Bonita. Uh, anyway, 1922. This little girl is Betty Jane Waters. Uh, she's a niece of Luther Burbank. And she's playing with the dog. This is his house on Tupper Street that we just saw in a, in a previous photo. This is a Luther Burbank Home and Gardens collection photo. Uh, that's in the library. And this is where, what that uh, about where that picture was taken um, to, uh, recently. The Sonoma Avenue, of course, and the city hall on the other side of the street, um, right off of Santa Rosa Avenue. Okay. All right. Um, I I have a cat in my way. I have to get rid of. Anyway. This is the uh, Santa Rosa Municipal Airport in this photo. This photo was taken in 1941. And it took me a long time to figure out where this photo was taken. And then I learned, I learned quite a few things about it. And so uh, this photo in the background back there is Fountain Grove Hills, uh, Sky Farm, or is that Sky Farm? Yeah, Sky Farm Road is back, would be back in the back uh, there. Um, so the, the Fountain Grove round barn is out of the photo on the right. This photo is almost looking north. And uh, so this was 
the airport. It was built in 1928 by Richfield Oil. On land, it was leased from uh, Kanye uh, Nagasawa, which a fountain grove, which I, I did not know that part of that part of that fountain grove land extended into the into the flatlands. Anyway, the airport later became owned by Santa Rosa, and then it was displaced by the Sonoma County Airport after World War II. So this 1941 photo is is probably toward the end of the use, and I don't know how long it was a dirt runway. Uh, so I don't know how long it was could have been, you know, could have been used for for flying for quite a few more years. Um, Richfield, you wonder why Richfield is building an airport? Well, way back in the in the early 20s, um, in, the, in the 20s, Richfield was trying to be uh, not only were they uh, uh, an oil dealer uh, selling oil and, and having, you know, and making gasoline and stuff, they were trying to be a developer. And they were trying to build build uh, neighborhoods. Uh, they would build an air they would build an airport next to a, a major highway and a gas station and an airport and and housing uh, houses and stuff like that. They really barely got going. Um, in this case, in 1928, they built the airport, and and a lot of these a lot of the airports they did build. You know, they put in a gas station on the highway and they put a 125 foot metal tower. With a beacon on top and big giant letters spelling downward said Richfield on it, and there were beacons for the for the airport, and they also also were part of the part of the gas station thing. And uh, but the depression came, put an end, <laughs> put an end to that. It almost put Richfield out of out of business um, because of all that all of their their um, they were extended quite a bit. Excuse me. Um, anyway, the the out of this picture on the right is is a in this um, actually by 1941. I don't know if that tower and that station were still there when they um, created that expressway into town. Uh, it cut right through that area where the where the station was. So uh, at one point it was moved. The station was moved to uh, Lomitas and is now a residence. So it's still there. It's still around, I should say. And the uh, the Beacon Tower was torn down. But I have never seen a photo of this particular tower. Um, now there are a lot of pictures of this area, and so I'll have to go back to the library and look to see if I can see a tower in in the background of any of the, any of the photos. So. Anyway, uh, that that gas station and the uh, tower was located where the entrance ramp is for US 101 at Industrial Drive, you know, where Industrial Drive curves up and around and over the freeway. And that little entrance ramp right there, if you're heading um, on Industrial Drive, that's where the gas station was and the tower. The tower was almost today would be in the in the uh, in the freeway. Anyway, if you look at the next photo, this is the now photo, which you cannot see anything in it. But this, I'm pretty sure this is where this photo, where the photographer stood. Um, so it is, and we'll see the next photo, which I, I put in a map so you can see the location. And so the, the square, squ black square building is the outline of the, that hangar that was in that, that last photo. And then down below is where I was standing to take the photo. Um, and this is on the corner, this is on the corner of Airway Drive and Industrial. The, the runway ran uh, parallel to the building uh, uh, on the south side. So that's, I always wondered why Airway Drive was over here. And I always, always thought, thought about the Cotting Airport, which is over a couple of blocks. Um, and that's where that airport was. This airway drive is named from this airport. Uh, so anyway, that's enough about that one. This uh, this is photo of Rosenberg's, and uh, I was in Rosenberg's uh, the other day. And as I was heading upstairs, this photo was hanging on the wall. So I, I took a picture of it, picture of a picture. 
And then I went upstairs and I took another picture. So I think this, I think from the hairstyle and, and the stuff that was, that might've been 1960s. And then this is what it looks like today. It's Barnes and Noble, of course. Um, we used to be the coffee shop and, uh, you know, magazines and whatever. So interesting. Now, this is another photo when I was inside the store. Uh, this is this is Lazzini's today. When I was inside the store, this photo was taken, was hanging there from the ceiling, as you can see the hooks. And it's a little wavy because, you know, and I had to, you know, uh, look up to take the photo, uh, but it's not bad. Uh, and it was called the Parkett Market at this time, and I don't know the date of this either. Uh, this building looks kind of Art deco -y. I don't know. So I don't know when it was built, and I don't know how many businesses were in here, but I, I believe in the early 90s it was Bennett Valley Market, and then it was, and it's been Lazzini's now for uh, quite a while, even though the Lazzini's don't own it anymore. They kept, uh, they kept the name. And this is if you don't know, it's on Bennett Valley Road uh, between Farmers Lane and Takaba. Um, kind of on the market all by itself out there. All right. Next, uh, this is Santa Rosa Junior College sign. Uh, I should, you probably mostly recognize. And uh, this sign was damaged by a truck. I think it was even brought down uh, completely uh, by a truck that was too tall and they rebuilt it. And so, and I got this photo, was well, it's, it's also at the library, but it was also at the exchange bank. They have a collage of photos there because you know they're involved with the junior college. So uh, if you look at the connection of where this sign connects to the, uh, to the uh, pedestal there, you'll see the difference in the, in the now photo. When they rebuilt the sign, they did a great job rebuilding the sign. It looks beautiful. And they put an extension on it to make it taller so trucks would miss it in the future, hopefully. The stone pediments or the stone um, posts on either side are exactly the same as they were before. Okay. This is Exchange Bank. So we're looking on 4th Street. And this is the corner of Mendocino and 4th Street, looking at the um, Exchange Bank. And so I was looking at these photos. And this photo was also taken from that collage in the Exchange Bank. I could not find it at the library, so I don't know the date, but it has to be after 1906 um, because that's the new building, or new for 1906 anyway. So these workers are working on the railroad, and the railroad ran down 4th Street. And so I thought it was kind of interesting that the guys wearing white shirts all have suspenders. Um, long pants and boots and the other workers have coveralls um and then they everybody's wearing a hat and uh so i think this guy on the right looks like he might be the supervisor because he he's a little more dressed up um so anyway like i said they're working on the railroad and then so you can see what this spot looks like today and uh so anyway it's today's uh Exchange Bank. This is also on 4th Street, and that the building on the left is or will be um, Exchange Bank. There's a clock there on the sidewalk. It looks like a clock there on the sidewalk. So it could be a, a lot of times the clocks were put in by jewelers. And so I suspect there might be a jeweler in that building. This is before 1906, and there's nothing in this building that, su that survived, nothing in this photograph that survived the earthquake, except for the railroad. Uh, the courthouse, the 1883 courthouse, is, is on the far right. You can see the post there and the fencing that went around it. And then the streetcar, um, that inner urban car, is, is Petaluma and Santa Rosa Railway. So you can jump on that car here and take a ride uh, to Petaluma or Sebastopol or Forestville. Um, so it was it was kind of convenient, nice transportation. Um, and like I say, today uh, nothing is the same except for the streets. So this is on Fourth Street Exchange, uh, which was Exchange here on the on the right, and then Mendocino in the back back there, Mendocino Avenue. Uh, 
All right, uh, the Santa Rosa Fire Department. This was their their main building, or the I think it was kind of their only building in, uh, and this was bef before 1906. Uh, the, I think the caption says 1900 to 1905, and uh, this was on Fifth Fifth Street between Mendocino and B Street, and so. You can see on the next photo, it's not there anymore. It was take it came down in the earthquake. So and so I'm not sure exactly where it was in the parking lot, uh, but that's this is where it was. Next, we have we're back on Fourth Street again, um, and Mendocino is right there on the left. This is before the Rosenberg building. The Rosenberg building was built in the mid mid twenties, and so this is. This photograph doesn't have a date on it, but I estimate between 1915 and 1920. Uh, and there's a service station or standard station there. And I like this photo because the steins that were painted on the side of the buildings there. Um, and you can see the railroad in the street uh, again, uh, just like the, the previous photo. Uh, so that was the only thing that survived the earthquake really was the railroad tracks. And then some of these buildings are still, some of these buildings are still here. I think the Mailer building is still there down there somewhere. And that building way down there on the corner of D Street, it's, I believe that's still there too. And maybe some of these other ones. Um, anyway, so this is what it looks like today. And you can't see any of those buildings because of the trees in the way again. But um, anyway, there you go. Next, this is... Uh, Another big change is this is uh, late uh, late thirties or early forties. The Roxy Theater here on the left, um, the California Theater down the street a little bit, and across the street there's the Church of One Tree, the First Baptist Church, and then the Greyhound Bus Depot. Um, so nothing here uh, is the same as it is today. As you can see the um, the Santa Rosa Plaza took up all those buildings there on the left. The uh, Church of One Tree was moved and the Greyhound building was, another building was built. But it's nice that the architect kept the rounded side of that building as kind of a tribute to the old Greyhound building. So let's move on. This is um, Third Street and Exchange. Uh, so to the right is the courthouse, far, far, far right. And um, this is the IOOF building at that time. This is before the earthquake. I think it's 1903. Um, the Democrats in this building, Bazzini Restaurant, and uh, they called part of the, part of this block. I haven't I haven't really determined whether the whole block is the Ridgeway block or just a couple of these buildings. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, then the next photo is still a then photo. This is after I don't know the date. This is a postcard. Uh, it's after 1906, and it's the the next I O O F building. Um, and this is before they moved to that to the old uh, Hotel Lebanon that we saw in a previous photo uh, back there off of Mendocino. So this building lasted quite a while. It was severely modified before they eventually tore it down. <clears throat> and it's an empty lot waiting for Hotel E to complete. OK. Now we're back up on 4th Street again. So 4th Street and Hinton exchanges in the back behind the trees there. This is, um, don't know when it is. Uh, this was um, before the earthquake. The building back there with the steeple on it or that cupola, uh, that is the courthouse, the Sonoma County Courthouse. And that was the first purpose-built courthouse and between that building and the building on the right is Mendocino Avenue. It gives you, gives you some bearing there. The courthouse was originally built in 1955, was only one story, one of the first buildings built in town. They added a second story in the cupola and stuff uh, early 19, 1860s, excuse me if I said 19. 
And then next to it on the left, they added uh, Hall of Records and the jail. And I can't tell if this photo shows that or not because the trees are in the way. The space on the left is the plaza. There's no courthouse in it yet. That won't happen until 1883. So the caption of this picture says that it shows a muddy street. And it looks, it looks I, I can't tell if it's muddy or not. It looks pretty uh, disabled, dis disabled. And, uh, you know, it looks pretty rough. And that post, there's a post there in the middle of the street. And I, 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 I wonder what why that post is there in the middle of the uh, of the street. And it doesn't look like the railroad is running down 4th Street yet. That would have been in, um, well, I'm not sure when that railroad was put in. Oh, I think she was, uh, yeah, anyway. Well, they put in a, a street railway first uh, that was hauled around by uh, horses. And it went down 4th Street to uh, McDonald Avenue. That's when that was put in, uh, and I don't know exactly the date, but I don't think it's here then. It's hard to tell railroad tracks in, uh, in some of these photos. It, they really kind of disappear. Anyway, so today um, we look at this view, and the plaza is still there. And I, I just like to call it the plaza because that's what it was originally called. Everything else has changed. Um, lots of trees. Anyway, next, Santa Rosa steam laundry. Uh, and steam laundries were common were common uh, back in the you know the beginning of this of the 1900s. This is 1956, as you can tell by these two cars. These two cars are almost um, brand new. If this is 1956, uh, and this was this address is on A Street. Um, it says First Street. I'm sorry. A Street runs is behind us, running uh, north and south. This is um, First Street, running alongside of the building here. And there's a couple of businesses further back. Um, this is 1956, so the the expressway. Uh, well, 19 yeah, uh, 1956. So the freeway. It's not a freeway. It's an expressway. Is back behind these buildings, and it cut off cut off first street. So anyway, today, this is, or was, I should say, uh, this is uh, the Sears uh, Auto auto uh, Service Center. Uh, can't remember what they called it even. And uh, so the, the first street was just part of their parking lot at this point. And so this building has been vacant for quite a while. Okay. This back back before the earthquake again. We're back over here on. Uh, this is looking north on Hinton from Third Street. Fourth Street is in the background. This arrow, this black arrow here, is showing the city hall. City hall was built in the 1880s. Uh, not sure what year exactly, but I think pretty sure it was 1880s. Um, so this photo was probably around 1890. Um, the uh, 1883 courthouse would be on the left. Um, but everything here, this is a Santa Rosa Fire Department, by the way, uh, what it looked like in uh, 1890. And it's probably their entire complement of the, their fire department. And so this is what this looks like today. So like it says, everything has changed. The earthquake changed a lot. It was a big, big, point in the history of Santa Rosa, which, you know, was, was kind of odd because all of the newer buildings were built in 1907, 1908. And so they all aged at the same time. So by the time the 1960s came around, um, you know, those buildings were 60 or 50 or 60 years old. And so they were getting to be obsolete. Um, anyway, this is... Um, Fourth Street is running across in the front, and this is Mendocino Avenue running away from us here with the Redwood Highway sign. The other side of the sign said Santa Rosa on it. And, you know, Exchange Bank on the left, Rosenberg Building on the right. This photo was taken from the courthouse steps. That's why there's a little bit of elevation in it. And it says it's 1927. 
And this was before, uh, this was the Redwood Highway, but not US 101. Uh, they had probably designated it 101, but it was not named that yet. And there's no signs to that effect, probably until close to early 1930s. Um, anyway, the next picture, uh, which I found this photo, it was hanging in the window front down 4th Street the other day. So I took a picture of the picture because I thought it was kind of neat. Um, and I don't, I don't think, I looked in the library and I couldn't find it because I was trying to find a date. Uh, but I would say it was late 30s, early 40s by the, the age of the automobiles. Uh, same buildings, same basic everything, except uh, newer cars. And in, now you can see the sign or the back of the sign where the US 101 is and California Highway 12 is right there. So 12 went, ran through the middle of downtown. And then next to it is a one-way sign. So when you came through town, whether you're going north or south, when you came to the courthouse, you had to turn right. And then you turned left and then turn left and then you turn right again and you're back continuing on through town. That's how you had to get through town in those days until they built the uh, expressway a few blocks to the left. So, uh, and that was built in the 40s. So that's why it says this, this picture was probably before that. Uh, the Redwood Highway sign is here. So everything moved to the, to the expressway. So they got rid of that sign. I always wonder what happened to that, but it was pretty darn large. Anyway, and then what's what it looks like today. Uh, both those pictures were taken from the courthouse steps, so they're a little bit elevated. I couldn't do that. And uh, so I took it, I just lifted, lifted the camera over my head to get a shot between this new sculpture here in the front. Uh, so anyway, actually, um, and this was the last slide. So we managed to get through the whole thing. Um, how are we on time? I hope, uh, hi, Ray. I'm still uh, here. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> you, you know what? We, um, we did go over. So thank you to oh. all of our participants for your patience and your understanding. Um, it was chock full of information. Ray is just a wealth of all the information about those um, past photos. And I chose to just let you keep on going because I couldn't even imagine anybody saying no to that. Um, and it's just so much fun to hear all of that information and then to see the, the then and the now. And I want to bring attention to... Um, and I'm actually going to go back on our slides here just so we can have that last photo. If anybody would like to uh, have a question or a comment right now on Zoom, you are welcome to add those to our chat box. Also on Facebook, if you'd like to type in your questions or comments into the comment bar. You can do that on Facebook Live. And thanks for joining us both on Facebook and on Zoom. I'd love to add right here, you did a great job with this photo because you said that the um, the, path, the photo right before was taken from the steps of the courthouse. And mm -hmm. you can see right here at the bottom of this photo, the, that is actually some of the marble stonework from the court from the courthouse steps really? that that previous photo was taken from really? so uh yeah the city actually had this material and made the outline around the grass area from the same steps material um so that's pretty awesome yeah. that you and, got that yeah and you know that the outline of that grass area is kind of a uh, plus plus shape it's supposed to yeah. mimic, it's supposed to mimic the outline of the 1883 courthouse correct it's, yeah it's yeah not exactly, so it's, it's not exactly uh what it was but uh that's that's was the intent yeah so 
Great job in capturing that photo. Great job in capturing all of the photos. I mean, we can see your shadow. Sometimes you're standing in a crosswalk. I love that you used uh, technology to get some of those photos. Just a couple photos uh, prior to this one, you had the photo of the then uh, photo, the, the, the older photo that showed the Santa Rosa Fire Department and it showed City Hall right there. Uh, I believe that was was that Hinton. I get Hinton and Exchange mixed up, but that was the east side. So that was um, that was a Courthouse Square, and then and that showed you know their modes of transportation at that time for the for the fire department. And then it cut to the photo of now, in which that same building would be like where the Santa Rosa Metro Chamber is at. And it had an electric vehicle plugged in, getting charged. <laughs> oh my goodness, Ray! You didn't even did. I mean, that was just spectacular that you did that. I mean, <laughs> right. you know, uh, everything has changed, right? So, yeah. uh, right. talk about horsepower. <laughs> right. So, so that was wonderful. Um, I, would like, I would like to get the fire department to park all their vehicles in that place and take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> and they do they do circle around the square right there and use those um those side streets of the square um yeah. as part of their um training as well for driving the the vehicles around downtown yeah so you might be able to get something like that at some point you've just got to be there at the right time right. Uh, <laughs> so i also want to encourage everybody if you haven't already seen part one to the Santa Rosa then and now, which Ray, of course, calls it Ray's then and now of um, pictures of Santa Rosa uh, long ago and pictures of Santa Rosa today and sharing all of the history. Part one was actually uh, live on January 19th, uh, the third Thursday of 2023. You do not even need to know that. All you need to know is that it is now recorded and is available for your viewing pleasure on YouTube. And Ray actually mentioned it right before you gave the presentation that YouTube, those YouTube videos and those recordings are a great way to watch these presentations. And there's a bunch of pre presentations that Santa Rosa Historical Society uh, has has hosted and, and has provided for the public and they're all there on YouTube and you can go back and you can watch them and you can rewind as much as you want and talk about these different topics and photos and, and whatnot. So about the Creek, about downtown, about the cemetery, uh, there's just a wealth of information there. So I really encourage everybody to check that out. And if you want a really um, fast way to get to that YouTube channel, definitely visit the Historical Society uh, Santa Rosa's website page, uh, which is historical society Santa Rosa uh, org. So, and that is a great place to go for your membership for the Historical Society of Santa Rosa, as well as to find out about more events and more information. So, I'm not seeing any questions come about. Um, thank you to those participants that are still with us. I want to also give you information that the next webinar will be in November, the third Thursday in November, with more information coming out about that on the Historical Society of Santa Rosa's website. Thank you to all of our Facebook friends and family that are still there on Facebook Live. It, that's also a recording um, that will stay on Facebook. So you can always go to the Historical Society of Santa Rosa's Facebook page and find those recordings in the video. And here we've got maybe a question or a comment. Um, so that was just our facilitator over there on Facebook and our administrator there letting us know that the next webinar in November on that third Thursday, same time, 6 p.m., free on Zoom, and we'll be on Facebook Live, will be about street names. So that's going to be fun. You were talking about Monroe Elementary School and the name of that, but 
there's all kinds of history about our street names, right, Ray? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And thanks to uh, Loretta, who just said thank you so much, uh, that this was a wonderful webinar. Ray, you always knock it out of the ballpark. And I'm going to give you more than a minute here because we've got time. You got to talk about the picture behind you. Oh, <laughs> that the house is the is the was the caretaker's house in Howarth Park. And uh, about five or six years ago, now the city of Santa Rosa had had said that they were going to tear it down as well as a few other places. So I I wrote a letter to the editor at Press Democrat. Um, and I don't know if, you know, I think there were other people who were, were also were uh, uh, up in arms about tearing that house down. This is a 1915 craftsman style home. It is in really, actually, really excellent condition, and it's and it's pretty original, except it's not in its original location. But it's it's uh it's very very good shape and stuff. So I I have been working with the city of Santa Rosa to uh, for the the Sonoma County Historical Society, and hopefully in conjunction with the Historical Society of Santa Rosa to take possession of this house and use it uh for meetings and classroom and stuff it's only about 800 square feet it's not the um it's it's you know it's it's not a very large house you know at all but uh and i thought it'd be really cool to put in uh to create kind of a not a museum but kind of a museum i wanted to use i wanted to restore it with 1915 uh appliances and uh and decor and uh it's in the middle of a park so it's not really uh you know there's nobody around so it'd be really hard to secure very well but anyway that's one of the that's a project we're working on as well as uh we recently acquired about 37 feet of fencing from the 1883 courthouse which i didn't know anything about till yeah. somebody had emailed through the sonoma county historical site Web, web page saying they had two sections of fence from that courthouse and they needed to get rid of it. It was out in a farm in, in Sebastopol. So um, Sean Bressy was able to uh, come up with a trailer and a truck and I helped them load it on the back of the truck. It's There are 17 foot long sections and each one probably weighs about 300 pounds. And it's made of galvanized pipe. It's it's kind of intricate uh, the way it's designed. Um, it's finials, metal finials every foot or so. And so this this stood all the way around the courthouse, um, you know, from 1883 till 1906. And it was actually a lot of it was there uh, up until 1908 while they were building the next courthouse. And then they took it all, it all went away. And there's actually, I found out that the city of Santa Rosa and their corporation yard has a section of this fence as well, uh, it, back there in their yard somewhere. Um, so uh, one of the things that we want to do is, is find a place to, to display it. A lot of people have been suggesting we put it back in Courthouse Square, but we need to come up with a real plan of action of how, um, you know, design and everything. There's also some sections of this fence on the old Howarth, Howarth property. Uh, apparently back in 1908, Howarth, I can't remember his first name, um, uh, got a hold of sections of this fence and put them around his ranch uh, on Ursuline and uh, Redwood mm -hmm. Highway. And uh, some of it has been damaged, but there's, there's a couple of sections, about 50 feet worth there. Uh, over there, uh, buried in concrete. So, uh, so there is some more. I don't know if anybody knows of any more sections of that fence. I, you know, would certainly like to know it. Uh, and you can email me through the through the website. And I also want to point out that you have a site, a page on Facebook um, that you posted pictures of this fence and asked for the public's opinion of where the fence that you know maybe should go um so tell us about that facebook page and so that people can go and take a look at the pictures 
and then chime in if they'd like to. I know I did, or I maybe I chimed in on somebody else's and talked about our, you know, our new courthouse being built uh, yeah. up there on um, what is that? Yeah, in, uh, uh, administration. Yeah, administration in Mendocino. And so I'd love the new courthouse to have some of that old history with yeah. it as well. That would be that would be a really great tie-in. And I don't know that they want 300 pounds of fencing, but <laughs> that might right. be a hard sell. Yeah. Um, but tell us about your Facebook page too. Well, my my Facebook page is Sonoma County History. And uh uh we what we try to do is uh, Sonoma County history. So uh, I poke around on Facebook, you know, the Russian, you know, a lot of uh, societies, the the uh, Santa Rosa and uh, Russian River, Petaluma, you know, a lot of these people have uh, Facebook pages as well. So when there is something of interest uh, from the county, uh, I share it. So there's, it's not just my postings of uh, stuff. And also, you know, my then and now, which I post about once a week, once or twice a week. Uh, there's all those other ones that I that I uh, share to this page, so you get a lot of history there, and so we get we get a lot of great comments and so on. Yeah, so the fence was was one that we had uh, that was that brought a lot of comments and stuff. And the, it's interesting you talk about the new courthouse. It's like this new courthouse is almost built, and it's like did they even talk about it or anything? I, I never saw a design. I never saw a picture of what it's supposed to look like uh, or anything. And all of a sudden you're in the middle of, you know, and it, was, it wasn't it last year they were talking about putting the courthouse where Sears was. And it's like, and then all of a sudden, but, no. but they're all no, that was, that's the County building. So the, oh, the courthouse okay. was in plans a long time ago. And it yeah. also has, has a bit to do with the state, I think. So that might be yeah. some of that. Um, right. Well, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so that building is almost built. It looks like, and uh, I haven't seen, seen or heard anything. Of course, the uh, the current courthouse is very uh, nondescript. It seems like nobody really cares about it. Whether it gets, whatever happens to that building. Um, um, I think the people working there care that it goes away, <laughs> like as in they're in pl applauding that it goes away. It has a <laughs> lot of issues, from what I hear. Yeah. Um, it is not necessarily the best working conditions um, and up to today's standards. Once again, that that seems to be what happens, right? Yeah, um, our standards increase. Yeah, 1969, so, I'm sure that was the same yeah. story, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's a here's a comment about that um, house in your the picture behind you saying that a, a friend of um, a commenter here and then names the friend Sarah Gray rented that house until recently when um, Mark Richardson, which I recognize that name from the city of Santa Rosa Parks and Rec, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not that recently, but, you know, a while yeah. back had to change the arrangements. And I know there was even I had a friend that rented that place as well. So um, and that maybe was, uh, you know, this side of of 2000 i think so um so it has been rented out previously there has been people that have lived there but i think um if and you might be able to correct me on this isn't asbestos one of the issues that of that building well there is that's what was said in the report but there um there's no heating pipes in it or there's there's nothing that would have as asbestos in it you know the the, mm -hmm. the I believe there's some linoleum in the kitchen and the glue in that might have asbestos in it, but that doesn't need to be disturbed. You know, that's, that's usually it. Now, lead paint, the building was built in 1915. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sure there's lead paint and the lead paint's the same thing. If you don't disturb it, you just paint over it. There is there's no issue. And uh, there's, and I did the inspection on the house myself and there's, you know, the foundation is solid, you know, so there's, it's in, it's really in great shape. There's a little bit of dry rot on the porch, uh, but other than that, the gutters need to be cleaned out. You know, it needs some, it needs some maintenance, obviously. You know, the it, it uh, the paint's still in really good shape though. So, I I think it's a great residence. Now those the people who have rented the house in the past, 
uh, if we get this house, I'd be interested in some of that history. Uh, you know, how, how mm -hmm. you came, how did you rent that? How, how did you come upon renting it? I thought, you know, like we call it the caretaker's house. Um, so I kind of, uh, I kind of might've thought that the, the house was, uh, if you're caretaking something, the park, you know, if you're caretaking a park or something, you're actually kind of almost like a, an employee, not an employee, but a, um, uh, uh, you know, you might get that house for almost free, uh, you know, in, in exchange for looking things, you know, looking, looking over things or something. So I, I don't know. I'd be really curious to, to understand how, how that procedure worked. And, uh, and of course, the history of that house where it stood originally before the, it was moved in the eighties, I believe to that location. So I would, I would, I know where, the, I know where the house used to be before it was moved, but I would love to see some pictures of it, you know, way back and, uh, and learn more about it, but yeah, which will be, which will be in the future if we actually quote, take possession of it. Yeah. Well, speaking of photos, we've also have a comment or a question from Loretta. Um, have you ever found a photo of the Juilliard home uh, across from Burbank's home? Well, I, I haven't seen one. No. Um, there's another mystery. There's a house on um, Ulipa, uh, right on the corner of Montgomery. It was built in 1894, but it was not there. Uh, it was moved there. So, uh, you know, one of the things I would like to solve is where that house came from, where it was before it was moved there. It's a beautiful house. Well, if anybody's going to figure out these mysteries, Ray, it's probably going to be you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have quite a bit of tenacity to hunt these things down yeah. and to try to figure out and and you shared lots of great resources tonight as well um for the public so to in order and i know you did that on part one as well um sharing some resources about how people can can find some of these pictures and um find some of these resources online as well as uh visiting our our local library so Thank you for that. And thank you for all of your time and energy that you put into this. I mean, this is, uh, you know, along with everything else that you do, as I mentioned earlier, the president of the Sonoma County Historical uh, Society, and thank you for all of the work with that and uh, bringing us a lot of information and award ceremonies and, and the history day that you recently had uh over at the finley center so which is just so coming, the, or the, coming yeah is we had one last year this year it's uh, october 21st at the finley center i'm glad you brought that up and the next year is going to be november 4th at the vets building so this is an ongoing thing so showing off a lot of history of the county all these different organizations and cultural uh as well the um so we have much, much information and stuff to show off. So come on down. Yeah. So just to be clear on that, I want to make sure that people get that. It's um, History Day and lots of organizations participate. It's at the Finley Community Center um, right there on, what is that, Stony Point and West College? Yeah. And it is on October 21st. So that is a that is an event to to head to. You'll you'll see Ray there, so you can ask him some questions in person and get some more information and lots of great resources when you when you head over to History Day on October twenty first. So we're just about wrapping it up here, Ray. We're keeping them everybody over time, but I really appreciate everybody for coming on out and enjoying the webinar. Thank you, Ray, once again, for all of your work and for sharing all of that information. Uh, guys, you all saw everybody here. That was over 100 slides. So thank you uh, for putting all of that together. And remember that you can go and view it again on YouTube um, and head on over to Histor historical society Santa Rosa.org in order to find the Facebook page, find the YouTube channel, and also 
uh, enjoy signing up for a membership. Find out more information about upcoming events. Remember, another webinar is coming up about street names in November. And uh, just more information in general about the history of Santa Rosa. Many thanks for coming in on the chat. Thank you all for joining us, both on Zoom and on Facebook. My name is Leslie Graves. This has been Ray's Then and Now, which we call Santa Rosa Then and Now. But you know what, Ray? I don't I think Ray's got it, got a handle on that. Remember to enjoy his uh, Facebook page at Sonoma County History and give him a little shout out for all the hard work that he does. And we'll see you next time. That's in November, the third Thursday at six o'clock. Look for more information coming out at Historical Society, Santa Rosa.org. Everybody, thanks again for joining us and have a great evening. Be safe out there. Good night. Good night.